We turn to the book of St. Luke, chapter 17. chapter 17, verse 1, then said he unto the disciples, and we just talking about this morning about people that are uh, uh, deceived, people that are uh, hindered in every way along this way, but here he says here, then said he to the disciples, it is impossible, but the offense will come. Amen. So, here we go, church. You can be assured that the offense will come, that you're going to be offended, uh, that the devil is going to hinder you in your life. Right. But Jesus here is talking to the, his disciples, and he's, uh, he's telling them some things, that, and we need to pay close attention to it because sometimes we do things that we don't realize we do until maybe later on and the Holy Spirit shows us that maybe... We might have said something offensive to someone or offended a, 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 a child of God. But anyway, he says it's impossible, but that the offense will come. And that means it's going to come. But woe unto him through who they come. And so that is the ones that is, is the offenders. That's the ones that he is talking about. And there are so many of them this day and time right. that does it intentionally. And they have they they have a desire to interfere with your life in any way they can, and to hurt you and to hinder you. And uh, even I'm, I'm sure on the visitation or the the preaching uh, that Brother Larry and Brother Jerry did yesterday, they, you might have felt a little bit of, of that going on uh, with people that they don't care anything about you being out there, and they uh, want to shun you and they want to let you know in a roundabout way that uh, they don't put their approval on things that you're talking about. But here, he said, it's, it's going to come. Right. And he says here, woe to that one that it comes through, because notice what he says here about uh, the one that does all of these things. It were better for him that a millstone were hung about his neck and he cast into the sea that he should offend one of these little ones. In other words... Right. Before, before <laughs> the offended one. Now notice here what he says. It would be better for him with a millstone around his neck and he cast in the sea than that he should offend one of these. So if, you know, these people that are offenders and all this, they need to understand what they're doing and the penalty for this thing and and they realize what they're doing and they might and, 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 and get that thing out of, out of their life and try to straighten up because he says here, he says that that they then that he should offend one of these little ones. So he is going to be uh, uh, punished for these things. And in verse three here, he says, "Take heed to yourselves. Amen. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him." Now you say, "Well, I don't want to rebuke my brother. I, I, don't, I mean, I." I don't want to hurt his feelings and all this. Listen, it's better for you to do that. It's better for you to rebuke him. It's better for you to tell him, hey, you hurt my feelings or you, you did something like this. Notice what he says here. Notice what he says here. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. Right. But now listen, if he don't, if he don't repent, Listen, you did what you're supposed to do because it's your it's your duty if if one of the brethren or sisters offends me in some way and, 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 and I feel like that, that they're maybe intentionally doing it, I'm supposed to say, now listen, you know, you shouldn't have done that. Because listen, it's better it's better for me to say that and let them understand that I I I, I care for them and I don't want to see them. Uh, as the, here he says, cast into the sea, 
I don't want to see that happen to them. And so here, it's it's our it, we're not doing them no disservice when we rebuke them, but we're doing them a help. And that's the same way it is with with a, uh, our pastor or a preacher getting up in the uh, pulpit and preaching that uh, sin sin is offensive and that. Uh, that murder is a sin and that homosexual is a sin and all these things. Listen, people need to know about it. Amen. And they need to hear it from uh, a one that knows the Lord. And so you're not you're not you're not troubling anybody. You're not harming anybody when you rebuke them for this. Because notice here, he says here in verse uh, three, and if he repents, for, forgive him. Not notice. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turns again to thee, saying, <laughs> I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Right. Now listen, if you, I, I've never had this done to me. I've never had it pulled on me. But you take someone who comes along and slurs you in some way, and 20 minutes later he comes by and says, I'm sorry I did that. It really means it. And then an hour later, he comes back and swears you again. And then he comes back and, and listen, about the third time, I imagine we're going to get kind of worried with that thing and say, he don't mean what he's saying. But listen, what the Bible says is, you forgive him. Mm -hmm. It's easier for you to say, yes, I forgive you, and have, have that desire in your heart because, hey, remember where you're at. Remember... Remember your Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember this morning when you uh, walk up and down this earth and, and many times as you sin after you're saved and that you have to be troubled about that and you're sorry for that and the Lord forgives you of these things. Listen, you put your, yourself in that place and you'll understand more about this guy that's coming along offending right. you these seven times. But now notice in, in, in the scriptures... Uh, later on, <clears throat> they come to Jesus and they ask him, shall I forgive my brother seven times? And he says, forgive him 70 times to seven. Mm -hmm. And so listen, there's no end to what the Lord does for you. Right. There's no end to it and there's no end to your sinning because you do it every day. Right. And when Jesus Christ comes to God and, and points out the fact that he's mine, he's mine, and that sin is forgiven, and there's no telling how many times in a day, sometimes that uh, the Lord has to come to my uh, my fault and, and say to God, "Hey, He's mine." Mm -hmm. And so we don't need to get let this body get all upset when someone uh, offends us, and then comes back and says, "I'm sorry," mm -hmm. because listen, that's that's the proper way to do it. That's Amen. the way that is pleasing to the Lord. So here we see here uh, in verse uh, in verse uh, five, and the apostle said unto the Lord, "Increase our faith." Mm -hmm. Well, huh, that's exactly what I need. That's exactly what you need because when these things happen, you need some faith, and you need it in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you need it in that person that's coming to you and saying, "Hey, I'm sorry." And, and, and listen, there's so many there's so many ways that people can that can offend you, and at the time probably maybe not realize what they're saying, what they're doing, how they hurt you, and and they come back with a sincere heart mm -hmm. and wanting you to forgive them. And listen, uh, it's it should be it should be to our advantage. I, well, it is to our advantage, but it should be uh, uh, in our heart to, to say, well, uh, I stand before God. Mm -hmm. I stand before Jesus Christ. I stand in the same shape that you're in, and I have to plead and ask forgiveness too. So that's that's what the, the thing is. But he says here, Lord, increase our faith. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamore tree, or sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted, in the sea and it should obey you and i wonder you know uh you think about this why would the lord use the grain of mustard seed and we know the most of us around here has seen mustard planted and we know it's a very very small seed but but he's saying here this faith even though 
if you have faith and it's a small faith listen listen it's it can be a hundred percent faith as a mustard seed or it can be a hundred percent faith as a basketball size of a basketball so listen what he's saying is this morning you need you need faith in the lord jesus christ mm -hmm. and you need to uh, pray as the apostles did increase our faith because we so many times fly off the handle and we let the old flesh get old overpower us sometime and i was going to do this and i'm going to do that there so and so listen that's not the attitude that we should have amen because we'll suffer for it because one day people one day we're going to stand before god and we're going to give an account for all right. these things and lord help us because jesus christ is the only one that can will be there as our uh, adversary and saying or uh, as our mouthpiece and saying to us saying to god he's mine he's mine and and he's mine and no, no telling how many times he'll have to say that because all of these things is going to be brought up and we we need to have the lord jesus christ on our side so we need to practice this and we need our faith increased amen and so here he's using this this mustard seed as an example of of our faith and 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 so he says he says here uh, in verse uh, uh, of seven, I believe it is. But which one of which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him, By and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet? Now that's you know, and of course he's talking to the disciples. He's talking about in their time, and they had they had servants that did everything that they that they had to be done. And he's saying to this servant, or he's saying to the disciples, which one of you would do this thing? And so he says, if you've got a servant out there plowing in the field and he comes in, will you offer him something? And that's what he says here in verse eight. He says, but will not rather you, you say unto him, uh, make ready for with I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and after where thou shalt eat and drink. And so, uh, again here, the, the Lord is trying to show the disciples that our love for one another ought to be greater than what it is. Amen. We ought to love one another uh, and put them first in our life because uh, Jesus Christ did the same thing. And I mean, he's our example, people. There was, there was no one else, there was no one else that would come to the cross and die for our sin. There's no one else that would walk this earth some of 33 years and be rebuked and have this and left a place, a, a home where that he was, he was in heaven. But mm -hmm. he did this for us, and there was no one else to do it. And so uh, we, as as Christians, ought to try to take on the role that Jesus Christ did here and. And, and I know we're not going to walk and do like Jesus Christ did, but that should be our goal this morning, is to, before we let this tongue get in gear, we should think. Amen. Because uh, uh, sometimes the tongue, as James says, is a wicked little thing. So here he says in verse 10, So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded, you say, we are unprofitable servants, we have done that which was our duty to do. And so we are this morning unprofitable servants uh, in, in, in that respect. So notice here, and it came to pass in verse 11, he went to Jerusalem that he passed, as he passed through the midst of the, the Samaritans and, and Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that, had, that were lepers, which stood afar off. Now that was the custom in the in the in his day there that the lepers would stay so many uh, feet or so much distance away from them, and they wouldn't touch nobody. They, they and if anybody, uh, the family, if you got anything, the family brought them something, and laid it down, and they come and got it. So nobody would touch them because it was, it was, <clears throat> it was a type of sin. Mm -hmm. And listen, you don't need to get you don't need to fool with sin. And Amen. those people didn't need to fool with those people that had that leprosy because if they, they if they got on them and all, if they would have it too. So here he says here, 
uh, and, and, uh, uh, and, and notice here in, in verse 12, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, Jesus seen them, he seen the sin, the things that they represented, and when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass as they went. Now notice here what happened to them. They were cleansed. And I don't believe, according to the way that the scripture reads here, that they ever got to the priest. I just believe that it says it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. So, but anyway, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. Amen. So again, here, here we are in this sinful state of our, of our life, and we're crying out to the Lord Jesus to have mercy on us. And what does he say? I forgive you. Amen. I forgive you. And people, that's where we're at today. I mean, that's 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 the state we're in. We we got we got this free, and we should we should use it like we got it free. We should be kind kind hearted enough when someone someone says something that hurts our feelings, we should have a heart of love within us and say, brother, I, 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 I want to tell you something. You, you, you hurt my feelings. Mm. You ought to say it with, with love and not say, well, you so-and-so, I'll go get my gun and kill you. Uh, and, and that's the way, that's the way that the most of the of, uh, situations are handled is, well, I'll do this to him because he did that to me, but that's not the way to do it. Because you want a reward when you stand before God. Right. And listen, when you when you tell that person with a heart of love, hey, you you, you hurt my feelings. And if he doesn't repent, hey, that's between him and God because yeah. you've done what he said you, for you to do. But if that man repents, listen, what if you help him uh, uh, to, to escape a hell of mm -hmm. And so this morning, again, as we see these things here, uh, and, and this one, this one come back and with a loud voice he glorified God. Now notice, and fell down at, on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And so the Samaritans were the half-breeds of the Jews and the, the uh, Greeks or whatever, and they were looked down upon. And it brings it out that he was a Samaritan, and evidently he was the only one that was a, that was a Samaritan in the bunch and the rest of the Jews didn't even have the decency to come back and say, we thank you, but he did. And Jesus answering said, where were, said, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? And I want, as I was, as I was trying to study this and reading this, listen, <clears throat> you notice there was ten of them. And nine of them left. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus, Jesus still, he got a tenth, did he not? When the one come back, he 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 come back and he said, uh, uh, he 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 praised the Lord for that. That was a tenth part of that number. Right. And I want I want to show you something this morning uh, in this that God, when 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 God and when the Lord Jesus Christ uh, asks us for to obey Him. Uh, even even in our tithe, even the money that, that he so much blessed us with. Listen, he don't ask for all of it, but he asked us for a tenth of it. And 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 he and and what he said here when he said, For is the nine, he wants us to spend that, that nine ninety percent in the way that it should. He would have us to he would have those to come back. But listen, being as they didn't, he asked about them. And I think this morning that we should, when we uh, are blessed of God, when we're blessed of the Lord Jesus Christ, and when we have uh, uh, the opportunity to, to make money and to tithe in the box or, or whatever, listen, we ought to remember these things. Listen, it's such a blessing this morning. 
it's such a blessing this morning to to come into the to the house of the Lord and to do what He says about yeah. tithing. Yeah. It's <coughs> such a blessing because listen, uh, He's blessed us in such a way we could have been like one of the nine that didn't come back. We could be sitting at home with not a penny to our name. We could be sitting there with not a, a, a can of beans in the house. We could be we could be there uh, hurting. But listen, He's blessed us. He's blessed us with permitting us to, to, to give that tenth, plus he's blessed us with that other 90% uh, that he gives us that we can feast on, that we can uh, buy things that we need and things of this nature. So I got such a blessing this uh, the other day when I read this and I, and I seen this, hey, there's the tenth, there's the tenth. So, and now notice Nathan, there are not found that return to give God glory uh, to give God glory, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, and go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Amen. And so this this stranger here, this stranger here was of another race, according to what the uh, uh, the Hebrew language says. And then in, in verse 20, and when he was demanding of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them, and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Mm -hmm. And so remember what you have in you this morning. When when these things happen to you, when you your your feelings is hurt, when you have that desire to do something that you shouldn't do. Uh, listen, the kingdom of God is in you. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Holy Spirit is there with you people, and, and so many people don't want to accept the fact that the Holy Spirit is living within my body this morning because, listen, it is, and mm -hmm. it communes with my, my spirit. And so I know this morning that that's true, and, 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 and it should be something this morning that we can hang on to, mm -hmm. that we can have such a wonderful time with and that we can feel his presence and we can listen to what Amen. he has to say for us because he's 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 with us people he talks to us all the time and you you you, uh, you you pay attention to what that that inner voice talks to you about because that's the that's the holy spirit if you're if you're saved and you're a child of god he said i send you a comforter Amen. and he's here yet people and he's within us he's living within us and so here, he says here, uh, uh, in verse uh, uh, 22, And he said unto his disciples, The day will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall, and they shall say to you, See here or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. And so he's talking about this morning, uh, false prophets and things are coming and he said don't you follow them because he says for as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven so shall also the son of man be in his day but first but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation what he done and as it, it was in the day of Noah, so shall it be also in the day of the Son of Man. Amen. They, they did eat, they drank, they married. Wives, they were married, given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. The flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also, as it was in the day of Lot, they did eat, drink, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And I want you to, uh, you know, if, if you remember, I, don't know if I wrote it down or not, but I, I was looking this up and looking this scripture up. And he's talking to the Jews. And listen, he says, when, when it, they're in Acts, I believe it's Acts 1. <clears throat> Let me find it. 
I'm going to read this to you. It, it might help you. Acts 1. Acts 1 7, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, in verse 6, look. And when they were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And that's what they, that's what was, that was the, 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 the thought. The Messiah has come and he's going to restore. But notice he said, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the time Amen. or the season which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Now let me hear it. And when he had spoken these things, while he beheld, he was taken up. And, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Now there's the, the cloud. Notice. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner Amen. as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they into Jerusalem. So this morning, Jesus is going to come back to the Jews. And he says he will recede up into a cloud. People, I believe that cloud that he's going to come back, he'll come back with all of his army uh, and, and, and he's going to set up his kingdom here. And that's during the tribulation or right at the end of the tribulation period. So this don't pertain to the rapture because the, the, the rapture is something that Jesus is going to come and hover over the earth and say, come up hither in this and the bodies and, and, and it's going to come and rise up. But here he's and he answered their question and they did not and they didn't understand it. But when when is your kingdom going to come? And he and he told them he told them just exactly how it would be when it would come back because he said the way that he went up, same way he's going to come back and he's going to sit on the Mount of Olives and he's going to, he's going to settle down on earth and he's going to proclaim hey. I'm the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and he's, going to, he's going to clean house. Right. And it's going to all be gone. So here, anyway, this is our lesson this morning that we, we wanted to get to uh, and, 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 and or wanted to try to, to read this, but there's a lot more in this. But anyway, our time is about gone. So anyway, I hope it's something that I've read or said here that will, in this, in this uh, trespass and in this... Uh, uh, offenses. Be sure and, and try to remember remember these things when they happen to you. Uh, if if you don't if you don't feel like I mean you know if, if, if it bothers you about rebuking, listen. Uh, try to pray for the person anyway, because yeah. listen and and it's 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 if you can do it in a in a in a God like manner and a and a and a, and a, and a, with a, with a with a, a good fit heart and say, hey, you hurt my feelings. I think that you'll find out that in the long run, the person that you say that to will appreciate it more later on because if it's a brother or a sister, listen, they understand and, and so many times this flesh does things for us that we don't want it to do for our, the spirit. And and it says things and it, and it after a while, the Holy Spirit talks to it and says, hey, you know, you shouldn't have done that. And so uh, I think that you'll find out that uh, uh, things will go a lot smoother with the, the friend that you, that rebuked you, and that you had to rebuke. And, and I, know, I know it will. So anyway, that's what God's Word says to us. Thank you all. Amen.